Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this video, I am unboxing the Avios Spitfire Mark 5B. Uh, this looks like a beautiful rendition of the classic World War II fighter, the Spitfire. It is 1.45 meters, so almost one and a half meters. It's see, uh, three bladed, uh, 15 inch propeller, uh, comes with four 17 gram servos and two 9 gram servos. There's also a couple micro servos in there as well. Um, let's see, the motor is an SK3 5055, uh, 380 kV, very low kV, but I would assume that's because of the extremely large three bladed prop. Uh, it's got an 80 amp ESC and it flies on 6S batteries, 3 to 4,000 uh, um, milliamp batteries. Let's see, it comes in two different color schemes. Um, I purchased the uh, the green European scheme because it was on sale. It is also offered in a um, African Middle East theater uh, tan and uh, sand colored uh, light brown colored uh, camouflage and uh, it just happened to be on sale for three hundred dollars it's normally 350 for either of the two color schemes but they were offering this one for 300 for a short period of time. And I couldn't resist. It has uh, retracts. I've never had retracts on a plane before. Always wanted them. And uh, retracts have gotten a lot cheaper um, because they, most of them are uh, servo-less and they don't require uh, compressed air like they used to. Things of that nature. It's just a, uh, a motorized mechanism that you know acts as a servo, and you uh, basically plug them in, and uh, you're off to the races. And um, it's a pretty big set of wheels from the looks of it. They look like they're at least two inch wheels. So uh, we'll go into that in more detail later, but let's take a look inside the box. Uh, everything came without any damage. Hobby King's usually really good about their shipping. Uh, this box was in a larger box and there was no dents or compression, anything like that. So right off the bat, we've got a whole bunch of stickers, some of them quite large. bet that there is a sticker or stickers to cover these two patches here. Um, there's our retracts. I would say that's uh, two and a half, maybe two and three quarter inch uh, on the wheel size. That's going to make uh, grass fields um, very doable. Let me get some uh, close in here for you. There's a lot of little spots like here uh, where things are going to attach. Um, like uh, the the cannons and uh, machine guns and um, there's a lot of detail you know a lot of uh, pe metal panel lines rivets um, little gas caps um, and the linkages are fairly well hidden um, there's a very short horn here on the aileron uh, ball linkage and the rod is goes down into the fuselage and up here to the aileron so it kind of goes at a diagonal and that keeps the uh, that arm hidden uh, so even you know when it's articulating you're not seeing a lot of linkage which uh, helps maintain that scale appearance and uh, we got nice split flap here very scale looking and there's a little door and it's spring loaded. So that hides the control horn for the flaps. When the flaps are flush and, and uh, down, that little uh, 
door closes. So again, helps to maintain that scale appearance. Very nice. We've got uh, two holes here and they have metal tubes in them. You can feel it. Uh, so they may be carbon um, or a thin type of metal like aluminum. Uh, but those are going to provide housing for longer carbon fiber rods that are going to provide a lot of strength to these wings. Here is the other wing half. Again, same kind of detail. Uh, that's kind of neat. The um, like the the rippled aluminum texturing, you know, as if the uh, you know it's kind of collapsing against. You know, it's a it's a faux effect, but uh, it just looks neat. And um, it looks like those are very nice hinges. Looks like this is very easy to take apart. The aileron is very smooth action, and it's very tight to the wing, which is good. There's uh, LED lighting at the wing tips, and I believe a few other places, probably on the fuselage. have our stabilizer same kind of uh, realism even little trim tabs not functioning of course just uh, creating that look for you and uh, not sure what that is for there but uh, we'll get into that later the obviously it screws down there's two tapped holes here and here and that looks like a carbon rod that is going to provide strength. Our rudder, I'm not going to unwrap that, it's all taped up. Um, I'll show you that during the assembly process. And I say assembly because this is not a build. The plane is mostly built, it's just putting things together. Call it an assembly. Aha, okay. Um, remember I was looking at the stabilizer a minute ago. There's this little plastic piece right here that is connected to a control rod. There's also a little wire here. I'd be willing to bet this little, uh, it's two wires, a black and a red, and that would be a light probably on top of the rudder. And this square thing, the, uh, the rear stabilizer here is gonna plug into it. So this obviously splits into two pieces and it is assembled, you know, one sliding into either side. And this is our, basically our control horn right here. I hope you are seeing this. Okay, let me just, cover this one more time. Make sure you're seeing this in the camera view. Apologize. Uh, here's the wire right here sticking out the back. Uh, like I said, I bet that plugs into the rudder. And here is our stabilizer control horn. And also, this is where the stabilizer is going to come together. It's going to bolt on here and here. And as you can see on the fuselage, same kind of uh, Nice high level of detail. The, uh, the canopy slides back and the door opens. I'm not gonna do that right now because it's kind of hard to do with one hand for I'll bet as I'm standing here. Let me give it a try. You know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk breaking something while I'm, I'm only holding this with one hand and trying to manipulate this with the other. Sit down for a second and okay I slid it part way back for you um, there are interior pieces that you can uh, can put in let's see um, oh yeah we have a uh, hatch right here, this little plastic tab, magnetic, and here's our very large battery bay. 
And as you can see, there are two battery straps. So, it's, you know, good thing to have that uh, extra strap, extra insurance that that big battery isn't going to come loose and be a problem. There is an 80 amp ESC tucked in back here. Very big motor. It looks like there are a couple of lights here in the nose cone. And there's a light here on top. Here. There's undoubtedly more pieces. Okay, here are the spars for the wing. Nice big, I'm not sure if they're carbon fiber or fiberglass, uh, but uh, nice big solid. So that's good. Let's see, here are a, a couple of detailed parts, uh, an air scoop of some kind, I'm undoubtedly not functional. Um, this looks like it's part of the interior. Here is the very large nose cone, and as you can see, uh, there is this big uh, black plastic bracket. Uh, so when the top of the nose cone is off uh, and the disc of the nose cone is attached to the motor, uh, this piece is going to bolt on top, and that is going to anchor and position our three prop blades. Now, a lot of the, uh, the main pieces of this airplane are available separately. Um, Avios is very good about that and um, Hobby King stocks a lot of them. You can get the prop blades separately. Uh, you can get the nose cone separately. I picked up both right away when I ordered the plane and I, I recommend that if you consider this airplane because it is a tail dragger, not a tricycle landing gear. And uh, tail draggers tend to dump onto the nose sometimes. So you could be taking off and hit some, uh, you know, like thick grass and, you know, the plane will just, you know, nose into the ground and snap a prop. Uh, or on landing, same thing can happen. You're, you're you know, taxiing to a stop and, um, or you're coming in hot and it, uh, it just sticks in the grass and, boom, you know, you snap a prop. So I ordered these two items. I believe they were like, uh, I think it was less than $20 for the blades and the nose cone. And I figured that was cheap insurance. I figured I'd rather have them in uh, my flight box. So if I you know, have a mishap and the plane is otherwise fine and flyable, I'd hate to miss out on a day of flying because I didn't have a spare prop. Um, but they also sell the canopy glass they sell the foam fuselage, they sell the wing halves, they sell the tail section, um, they sell the plastic nose cone. Uh, there's a separate section right here, about an inch long. Um, I'm sorry, you can't see that. Oh God, okay. Okay, fuselage. From this line here, this nose cone can be purchased separately if you bust this up. And uh, I'm not sure if that, how that comes off. There's looks like there's a couple of screws. Looks like there's a, yeah, there's a one, two, three screws there. Looks like one of them isn't even in there. Maybe it's in the packaging. Um, let's see. Oh. The tail wheel 
is sold separately. I'm just trying to remember the various things that I saw on the website. Um, you can go look yourself if you're interested. Okay, here we have more uh, trim items. Uh, big scoop uh, that was probably the radiator scoop. Um, the uh, uh, Those two are the exhaust tip. An exhaust that would come out the side of the fuselage. Uh, we've got a couple of cannons and guns. A um, bunch of little items all wrapped up in here. It's a nice pack of hardware. I'm going to take a few extra minutes when I'm going through this and I'm going to paint these uh, white plastic ball joints. Uh, either gray or uh, military green, olive green, whatever I've paint I've got handy that'll work for that. Just to make them blend in a little better. It's a, not a big deal, but it only takes a little bit of time. You know, you if at worst case scenario, you let them dry overnight. Um, easily done. Uh, yes. Interesting thing that this plane comes with. It comes with a two-axis gimbal, uh, left, right, up, down, uh, for an FPV camera that you can put into the cockpit. So instead of going full detail on the cockpit, uh, you can, and that may be what this plastic thing is here for, is to mount this server right here. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that's exactly what it's for, because it looks like it would fit. Um, let me get in closer for you. Okay, we have a two servo gimbal. So uh, the bottom servo here, and then you have a, another servo that is mounted on top of it. And then uh, this servo rockers this little deck here where you would attach a camera. And if you've got a set of FPV goggles and you've got a head tracker set up, um, you can set up a system so that uh, you'll have a camera here, and that camera would be mounted inside the cockpit right where the pilot's head would be. And you will be able to pan around left and right looking through the glass or through the plastic windows and out through the front. And that's probably why they don't have the plastic piece on here at this time. You, you can either put that on to make it scale or you can uh, leave that open so that you have a clear FPV view out the front uh, because looking through this plastic might not be great for, uh, for actually flying, but it'll make it look really neat while you're doing it to be able to pan around. And you could even leave the cockpit open and uh, be able to look left and right out of the airplane, look down at, out your wing. Uh, it should be a pretty neat experience. And I just happened to have purchased a uh, new set of FPV goggles. They are a, uh, a pretty good set, have a DVR built into them. And uh, so I will, I'll try to get that set up sometime this summer to be able to do that. I've got a couple planes that I've been wanting to do FPV on. And uh, so now I have this one as well. There's another little thing that comes with it. I'm not sure what this is for. I'll have to read through the directions. Uh, it looks like a little oculus or ocular, excuse me, um, uh, something that might, you know, swing into the pilot's view for targeting or something. I'm not sure. Um, there's a little uh, rod here and a little servo with a very small arm. It's a very, very small servo, it's like the smallest servo I've ever seen. But all it's got to do is move this piece. So um, I'll have to tell you where that goes as I'm doing the assembly. And then we have this item and again I'll have to confirm this but this looks like uh, something that might be like uh, a bunch of several Y connectors like for you know the two ailerons and the two flap servos to plug into a single servo um, you know and then these wires plug into the receiver I'm not sure I'm um, just guessing I'll have to look into it and uh, let you know exactly what this does. Tell you what, let me uh, just kind of lay this up to give you an idea how big it is. Let me just set these items aside. So 
rear stabilizer back here. That kind of gives you an idea of how big it is. It's, uh, it's quite a chunky plane and um, it's very heavy. That, uh, that motor is very heavy up there and the battery it's going to be even more so. But um, it, uh, it's certainly going to have a lot of power. So it should be uh, quite interesting. I uh, cannot wait to get this going. So I will do a full series of videos on this plane. Um, the next video that will be coming out for this will be the beginning of the assembly. I don't think more than three or four videos will be necessary to cover the uh, complete assembly and uh, radio setup, basic tuning, things of that nature. Um, I'm definitely going to try to put a receiver in here that has uh, AS3AX and SAFE. Um, so I've got that um, three axis uh, stabilization and safe mode. Um, one thing I've, I'm actually thinking about doing is even on my uh, competition gliders that I can't use AS3X on because it's a um, it's a illegal for competition. Of course, you know they want you flying it all by yourself, and that's fine with me. Um, but when you are first starting a plane up, you know, that you've never flown before and you're trying to figure out the center of gravity and things like that, uh, having uh, even basic three axis stabilization might be a really nice thing to have. And so I may try doing that with uh, a lot of my airplanes during my first few flights, you know, maiden flights and uh, getting things tuned, you know, making sure you've got everything set up right, that you've got, uh, you know, enough, uh, enough control angle and things like that so that, um, you know, you don't crash right away. Uh, having that stabilization would make those first few flights a lot easier while you're trying to worry about a whole bunch of different things, uh, you know, that might not be right and uh, you don't end up kind of doing yourself in and you know after that you can take it out and not worry about it but uh, with this plane you know with the cost and the amount of uh, electronics that go into it and whatnot um, having that uh, that safety margin you know that AS3X provides uh, I might want to go ahead and just uh, do that permanently so we'll see um, it's also, you know, how many channels am I going to need? I'm figuring that um, since the, the ailerons and flaps are not going to work in tandem, it's not like uh, a glider where you might use the flaps as extra aileron surfaces or like the timber uh, that uh, um, the, uh, the 1.2 uh, timber that has the aerobatic capability. Um, that is set up so that you can use the flaps as ailerons and then just as flaps when you need the flaps. And, um, you know, that requires extra channels. Now, uh, this plane is going to need, you know, elevator, rudder, throttle. It's going to need retracts. That's four. Ailerons, five. Flaps, six. So it's, you know, just enough right there. That doesn't include... Uh, head tracker for the POV that might actually run on a separate system. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that, having never done it before. Um, but that also means I'm going to have to run the ailerons on a Y connector, and I usually like to run the ailerons on separate channels. Uh, I just may not be able to to get a, have that luxury with this unless I, because um, I do have an eight-channel radio, but I don't have any seven or eight channel receivers and I would need at least a seven channel receiver to do that. So uh, we'll see what I, how I work that out, what I decide to do, um, you know, whether I buy a, uh, a receiver that has the AS3X feature and has at least seven or eight channels. So we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you're interested in this, uh, this kit, Again, it's available in two different schemes, about $350. It's available through Hobby King. I got it very quickly because it was shipped out of the, um, 
the U.S. Uh, warehouse, which is in Oregon. So it got here quite quickly. Uh, you don't have to worry about it having to come over from China right now with all the COVID thing going on. And I uh, hope all you guys are safe out there as you're quarantining at home. So I think I have covered everything for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Please click like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. To all my subscribers, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, please leave any comments. I try to get back to comments within 24 to 48 hours, sometimes even within a few hours, um, depending on when I catch them. So uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see, things you'd like me to cover, build techniques you'd like to see, kits you'd like to see, etc. And I'll see what I can do. Thanks.